17 with Tom Green, Kim Sherwood, Rick Zerak Sports, and meteorologist Lauren Boatman. Good evening, everyone. It's the new year, and for the first time in history, Americans were greeted on this day by the leader of the Soviet Union. The Soviet people were also greeted by President Reagan, and the message from both men was one of peace. News 17's Michelle Brazel reports. On a day in America that usually finds most people in front of their TV sets anyway, the message was heard by many. It was one of peace primarily, although both leaders took the opportunity to say what they thought it would take to have that peace. It is the forceful and compelling demand of life itself that we should follow the path of cutting back nuclear arsenals and keeping outer space peaceful. Both the United States and Soviet Union are doing research on the possibilities of applying new technologies to the cause of defense. If these technologies become a reality, it is my dream that will to one day free us all from the threat of nuclear destruction. American reporters in Russia during the speech were reporting the effect of Reagan's broadcast was difficult to judge, although some Soviet citizens were talking and called the speech sincere. Here at home, central Illinois residents were also reacting favorably. But I, I was glad to hear um, that, you know, they're both committed to world peace, or at least, you know, I've had feelings like that, you know, for a while. Yeah. The West, at least they, you know, trying to do something. Think it's good they're at least talking? Yes, I do. I really do. I think it was a good, good thing, a trade, uh, you know, both of them speaking, and then maybe with, through uh, communications with our media and uh, their media, the people will know what we feel like, and maybe they'll you know, we'll know what they feel like. Whether this idea will be repeated next no year isn't known yet, but both leaders expressed both wishes country. that, in the meantime, the Let two countries have the peace. Chistaya Nieba for all mankind. Thank you. Michelle Brazel, News 17. Despite the expressions of goodwill offered by the U.S. and the Soviet leaders, the new year arrived on a sobering note. That is the holiday traffic death toll. So far, 138 people have died on the nation's highways. And in Illinois, the death toll stands at two people so far. And one of those fatalities is an Effingham woman. Police report that 68-year-old Dora Shotman was approaching an intersection around 5 o'clock last night when a car driven by 43-year-old John Seeler ran a stop sign, hit a pickup truck, and pushed it head-on into Mrs. Shotman's car. A passenger in the pickup truck was slightly injured in that crash, and police say Mrs. Shotman died at the scene. Seeler was ticketed for failure to yield at an intersection. Well, Illinois' tough new drunk driving law is officially in effect today. Authorities all over the state began enforcing it at midnight, and it apparently had an impact. DUI arrests were down in Macon County, where only one was reported. The same true for Decatur, with only one arrest. In Sangamon County, however, there were double the number of DUI arrests, and that's despite the fact that there were no extra officers on patrol. Well, under the new law, those arrested last night could face losing their licenses. If you're arrested for DUI under the new law, you will be ordered to attend alcohol rehabilitation classes or receive counseling. St. Mary's Hospital in Decatur offers both inpatient and outpatient alcohol treatment and counseling. Director Bill White says he thinks the new law will help pinpoint alcoholics earlier. I think with the new law, the one advantage is that DUI and the, the kind of mandatory assessment, the increased number of people who are going to be assessed is going to identify a lot, much larger number of people at earlier stages of alcoholism than traditionally what we've seen in programs like employee assistance programs and, and aggressive DUI enforcement and assessment and referral uh, are going to mean there are going to be many of those people recovering from alcoholism and we're going to be saving them and their families years of pain and misery. White says he's expecting so many referrals under the new law that the inpatient program may have to be expanded at St. Mary's. Currently, the 14-bed program is full, and there is a waiting list. Well, here's a medical update of sorts, not on a human, but on an animal. Rudolph the white-tailed deer is on the road to recovery in Decatur's Northgate Pet Clinic. Rudolph, or Rudy as his friends call him, was hit by a car in Mount Zion in early December. 
The deer suffered two broken legs in the accident, but the motorist that hit him brought the deer to the pet clinic for medical treatment. Rudy's entire left leg is in a cast, and half of his right leg is in a cast as well, but he seems to be getting better. Rudy is friendly. He accepted uh, an apple for breakfast this morning from News 17's Doug Wolf. It's unlikely Rudy will be returned to the wild because of his legs, but he may eventually find a nice home in a local zoo. He's a cutie, isn't he? I think you like Doug, too. <laughs> <laughs> when News 17 returns, we'll have the farm outlook for this new year. We'll also be investigating the message behind the message. Stay tuned. During Goods Fashion Carpet's colossal winter clearance, you can save 20, 40, up to 50% on installed carpet. They have a large in-stock selection of famous name carpet in all styles and colors, featuring queen carpet of Anso 4 nylon from 888 a square yard installed with pad. To make the new year easier, Goods is offering no down payment, no payment until April, and no finance charge until April. Goods Carpet is the only place you can save up to 50% and make no payments until April. See our ads in the Decatur Herald and Review. Burger King presents the King Combo. Hey, Herb, look at all you get in this amazing offer. A juicy flame broil whopper, but that's not all. A large order of golden fries, but wait, Herb, there's more. An ice cold soft drink, all for one special price. That's right, Herb, one special price. Try to make this at home, you could pay three times as much. Plus, Act Now will throw in this handy bag. Don't wait, Herb, order your King Combo today. Here's how. Go to Burger King and say, I want the King Combo. That's I want the King Combo. Gary Dotson's attorney has asked to be taken off his case. Dotson, you'll remember, was released from prison after Kathleen Crowell Webb testified Dotson did not rape her. He was uh, convicted in 1979 for that alleged rape. Governor Thompson commuted Dotson's term but did not clear his name, so Dotson has two appeals pending for a new trial. Attorney Warren Lupul represented Dotson at his clemency hearings but says he hasn't heard from Dotson in two months. Dotson, meanwhile, says he doesn't care if he gets another lawyer. Rural telephone customers are going to have to dig a little bit deeper into their pockets this year. Rates went up for some 900,000 rural customers. They went up by 83 cents today. Now, no Illinois Bell customers are affected, but 500,000 customers of the Bloomington-based General Telephone Company are. The customers will be hit with a second rate increase in June. But GE GTE says about 60% of its customers should be able to actually save money under its new local usage plan. Formerly charged a flat rate, customers will now be charged only for actual telephone use. And farmers can anticipate more hard times in the new year. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says prices and farm income will continue to be low. 1985 ended with a 5.2 percent decline in prices from 84. Ag department economists expect no major recovery, at least through the first half of this year. Well, Congressman Dick Durbin says passing a farm bill was important in 1985, even though it isn't what many farmers wanted. Farm bill. Our farmers are in trouble. They need help. We've got industries uh, like the ethanol industry in Illinois that's so important to Decatur that needed help. And this farm bill, we were able to make certain, contain provisions which help to some extent. The ethanol industry is going to be encouraged, and we hoped it would be because of the sugar quotas that were maintained. Uh, the Farm Bill provides a basic uh, income security for farmers for, for a few years out. Mm -hmm. I think that's an absolute essential. So we're starting uh, 1986 with a good sound base in the agriculture community. That doesn't mean we're going to save all the farmers. A lot of them, unfortunately, will continue to experience difficulties. But I think... Durbin says Congress took their limited resources and applied them wisely to a difficult national problem. Not only will 1986 be a lean year for farmers, it'll continue to be a lean year for Macon County. Macon County Board Chairman R.C. Smith, during the taping of Channel 17's In Focus, says that the county will face financial woes in 86, but he told News 17's Doug Wolf the situation could improve as the year goes on. I think if we can get by this year through next August the 31st at the end of our fiscal year and remain in the black, I think that the ensuing fiscal year, there's a promise for better days ahead. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, I believe. Smith believes an, Im an improvement may come about if the county eventually implements a quarter cent sales tax and if the state eases up on mandated programs. The entire interview with R.C. Smith can be seen on Saturday at 1230. That's on News 17's In Focus. 
This week on News 17, we're reviewing 1985. And it was a year that featured slick, high-tech political commercials. Bill O'Neill looks at some of the better ones. I asked my daddy what this Star Wars stuff is all about. This slick TV ad used crayons and children to sell Star Wars, an issue that scientists have yet to figure out. The TV was not selling an issue here, it was selling a dream. If nobody could win a war, there's no reason to start one. And that dream is very much alive today, as nearly $3 billion will be spent this year on Star Wars research. The TV campaign on the trade war was not as successful. The U.S. racked up a $150 billion trade deficit in 85. And apparently not even members of the U.S. Senate have gotten that message. You're saying. Japanese car, Senator. It uh, belongs to my administrative assistant, and we are <laughs> bumming a ride with her today. I like that Japanese camera you use. <laughs> <laughs> or members of the media, for that matter. And unless you call your congressman right today. TV image makers matched up homeowners against special interest groups to save the deduction for state and local taxes this year. They won that fight, but the war is far from over. Another war that is far from over is the one against drunk driving. This Stevie Wonder song is the first time that a music video has ever been produced as a public service message. No politics, no complex issues, just an important message that hopefully many of us will buy, especially during this holiday season. In Washington, Bill O'Neill reporting. And apparently a lot of people did take it seriously. <laughs> Well, when News 17 continues, meteorologist Lauren Boatman has a fresh forecast for a brand new year. Also, meteorologist Steve Bray will tell us why those people in Buffalo are getting all that snow. It's New Year's week, and you can say goodbye to more than the old year if you don't get to your Nissan dealer by Saturday. That's the last day of his traditional year-end blowout, and there ain't nothing like it nowhere. More people buy Nissan cars and trucks at year-end than almost any other time. For good reason. Low prices, great deals, sales incentives, they could save you hundreds of dollars. But not if you don't get here by Saturday night. Don't let them turn the lights out on you. But the blowout ends January 4th. Get down to your Central Illinois Nissan dealer now. It's the 1986 Sports Show. Three big days of seminars, exhibits, displays, and much more. Steve McAdams and Billy Westmoreland will be on hand with helpful tips and instructions. Walt Watts will have tips on catching bass at Lake Shelbyville. See the largest display of boats in central Illinois. Talk with manufacturer's reps and see their selection of tackles and fishing equipment. Plus, a live trout tank. Save your ticket stub for many days. Paid admission for free admission to a special auction after 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. It's the 1986 Sports Show, January 3rd, 4th, and 5th at the Center Spring. I wanted to learn about computers to keep up with my job, but when was I supposed to go to school? I couldn't quit my job. Rich and Snyder classes were the answer. I knew I needed to continue my education after high school, but I wasn't sure I was ready for a big university. Richland was the answer. I'm getting a good education, and I'm saving a lot of money, too. Richland, where futures begin. Good looking day. What a way to start 1986. What a way to end 85 with a beautiful day yesterday and started today. And Kim, it looks as though for the next several days we're going to have more of the same. Good news. If you can handle them. You bet. Right. Temperatures today weren't too shabby as we look at that 14 and a 44. 1935 are the normal, but look at that 13 degrees below zero, which occurred way back in 1974. And the 61 occurred way back in 1901. Right now, we have 39 degrees with partly cloudy skies, 64% on the humidity. South-southwesterly winds at 10, 30.09 and falling on the barometer. And look at our precept. Nothing but the monthly total that we're expecting to reach a 156 as our average and our yearly total, 37.74. Uh, now, temperatures around the state as they look at those, 9 and a 34 up in the Windy City, 13.42 over at Champaign, 14 and a 45 in Springfield, 20 and a 51 down in the St. Louis area. Nothing going on on radar today, so we take a quick look at the uh, uh, st satellite picture as we have it up here. We do pick up nice clear skies running all across much of the country, but down in Texas, showers and thunderstorms in that cloudy mess, and then up in the lakes area, coming all the way across the top of the country into the Pacific Northwest. Well, that's another story. Here's what our weather map looks like. We can explain it. Nice high pressure centers here gives us a nice way of explaining those nice clear skies. But as we look up here at stationary front cutting up to the northwest and then the low pressure center sending way up uh, just north of uh, Washington there in British Columbia with the cold front coming down. In the western part of Montana they do have traveler uh, winter storm warning out 
They're expecting to get over six inches of snow tonight, and they're already getting snow. That is expected to move right on down into Wyoming with a traveler's advisory, and by tomorrow, they'll be sliding that on down into the state of Colorado with traveler's advisories. Out in the states of Washington and Oregon and the state of Idaho, well, they're expecting snow and also a bad combination of freezing rain, so they have traveler's advisories out, not a winter storm warning. Our forecast map, as we look at that, shows the low pressure center sliding a little bit to the east over into about the Detroit area. Frontal system stretching north and uh, east and west across the country. And all of the precipitation will be mostly to the north of that, as we see up in Canada and up in the Upper Lakes area. Nice, good weather. And, of course, can't forget the Pacific Northwest. That's where a lot of the other precipitation will be occurring. Temperatures around the country today went something like this. Couldn't find a low temperature this morning, so we'll pick up that nice 82 down of Fort Lauderdale in Florida. And our forecast for tonight... Starting off with clear skies, not quite as cold. Temperatures will go to the middle 20s with southerly winds uh, 5 to 10 miles an hour. And for Thursday, mostly sunny, the high reaching the middle 40s, southerly winds 10 to 20. And Thursday night, fair, back to the middle 20s again. And as we look at Friday, it's a good day, mostly sunny, the high near 40 degrees. And we couldn't ask for a nicer weekend coming up Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Sunny skies all three days, temperatures ranging from the 20s to the middle 30s, and look at Monday, 20s to the 40s on Monday. So it's a nice way to uh, start another week. And we have one more map up there. Look at the steering currents for the uh, day. They've all been very much west to east, straight across the country, not dipping a whole lot there. And uh, that's the way it looks for the next couple of days. Yeah. You know, we've had nice weather, but those folks out in Buffalo have just been deluged with snow. Why? <clears throat> well, uh, actually, it's called the lake effect. As we look at that, it's when water coming off, or the wind's coming off the lake, warm waters and hitting the cold air the, and ground and that sort of thing. But Steve, uh, meteorologist Steve Bray, he's been doing a little midnight oil burning, it, <laughs> and he's comes up with this explanation of it. All right. This scene is very familiar during winter, especially for those that live in the Great Lakes region. Here in Buffalo, a city that is famous for its lake effect snow, has had over 68 inches in December, setting a new monthly record. This weather pattern occurs near a large body of water where there's a considerable temperature difference between the land and the water. Typically in winter, this difference can be from 10 to 20 degrees. The major factor in creating this snow is a cold wind, usually from the north or northwest. A layer of air warmer and saturated with moisture is lifted above the colder, heavier air. As this air rises, it cools and in turn condenses into clouds. As this air continues to cool, it squeezes out all the extra moisture. This moisture then freezes and forms snow. The accumulations of snow varies with the strength of the wind and the amount of moisture available. Here in central Illinois, we don't have a lake large enough to cause that type of an effect. Our snow mainly comes from low pressure systems and their associated warm fronts or cold fronts, but that's another story. For Weather Watch, I'm meteorologist Steve Bray. I knew there was a reason we all lived here. Well, coming next, Grant Napier has the highlights of the bowl games and all the scores. Toyotathon deal? What are you waiting for? Prices may never be lower. Trade-in allowances may never be bigger. But time is running out. So your Toyota dealer is staying open late. And talking extra value deals to break his all-time sales record. Deals that can drive down the price, even on Toyota's lowest price truck. There's still a good selection. Don't wait. Toyotathon 86 is almost over. Hurry! Great stories to read and all the program information you need in the new issue of TV Guide. That's entertainment. Hello, we're back.
A lot of football today, huh? <laughs> yeah, and a uh, score you'd like to hear. Uh, the Rose Bowl right now, uh, third quarter. Chuck Long just ran it in from a few yards out, so they now trail UCLA 24-17. Oh, time. That in the third quarter. Hi again, everybody, and a happy new year. At the Fiesta Bowl in Tepe, Arizona today, the Michigan Wolverines turned in a 24-point third quarter, and they held on to beat Nebraska 27-23. Let me take you to the Fiesta Bowl, and we pick this one up with the Michigan Wolverines in the dark, Nebraska in the white, and as McCarthon, Clayton, the Doug DuBose, and it's a 7-3 ball game. Jamie Morris, Joe Morris's brother. Of course, Joe plays with the Giants. Big afternoon for Morris, 166 yards. That one to the five. Then it's Gerald Wright from two yards out. Michigan trailing 14 to 10. Then Jimmy Harbaugh puts Michigan on top as he takes it in himself, trailing 17-14. Michigan blocks a punt. They get a field goal, and then they lead 20 to 14. Harbaugh again working the same play. This time he goes to the other side. This makes it 27 to 14, and Michigan hangs on, and they go on to beat Nebraska the final from Tempe. Michigan 27, and Nebraska 23. At the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson ran for 129 yards and two touchdowns. But it wasn't enough as Texas A&M beat Auburn 36-16. to Roll it from Dallas, and we pick this one up with, uh, there he is, Mr. Jackson himself from five yards out, 7 nothing in favor of Auburn. And uh, the Texas A&M Aggies, though, come back. Terry Johnson gets the pitch, and apparently is stopped, but he carries on, goes down the sideline, and uh, this makes it a 7-6 ball game. They missed the extra point. Then it's Keith Woodside from 22 yards out, putting the Aggies on top 12 to 7 they went for two and missed uh, but uh, watch this play Washington and he flips to Bo Jackson and when this guy's in the open field you're in deep deep trouble if you're on the defense see ya there you see the acceleration that this young man has he goes 73 yards for the score and this makes it a 13 to 12 game in favor of Auburn but that's Anthony Tony coming right back he takes the pitch scampers uh, down the middle 22 yards 21 13 Texas A&M big play in the ball game fourth quarter and it is Bo Jackson stop on a fourth and goal. He is smothered at the line of scrimmage. One upcoming touchdown for Texas A&M as uh, Kevin Murray will hook up long with Woodside and Texas A&M goes on to beat Auburn 36-16. Well, tonight on ABC, it's the Sugar Bowl as Miami and Tennessee hook up in a game which could have an effect on the national championship. The Sugar Bowl this year between the Miami Hurricanes, an independent, and the Southeastern Conference champion Tennessee Volunteers. On the one hand, Miami, big and strong and believes fully that with a big win, they can claim the national championship at Tennessee. Could be, in my opinion, Frank Broyles, the best-kept secret in college football. Well, I think the reason they're the best-kept secret, they win in ways that people don't expect. They have the best turnover ratio record in college football. They play the kicking game, punt returns. They have patience. They just sneak up on somebody, and the first thing you know, the game's over, and they've won. They've got to gamble some in order to play this Miami team because uh, we saw Miami destroy Oklahoma in Norman. We know that physically Miami has the edge. Well, the Johnny Majors tells him he's going to roll the dice on defense to try to stop Testaverde and his great uh, offensive team. Whoever gets that first touchdown might find that to be a particular advantage. But it's a good one. Miami and Tennessee here on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And that's tonight, of course, the other big one in the Orange Bowl. Uh, it's uh, Penn State, Oklahoma. Penn State wins. They win the national championship outright. If Oklahoma wins, then it's probably going to be Miami or Oklahoma. Okay. And, Kim? When News 17 returns, we'll show you a New Year's celebration of a different sort. You know, life seems so empty. I just wanted to run away. Then he came along and took my hand. When I lost my job, I figured my family might be better off without me. But then he entered my life and gave me the strength to handle my problems. I was so lonely and so depressed, I felt my life was over. Then he showed me a new beginning. Wouldn't you like to meet him? If Santa forgot to get you that special musical instrument you wanted so badly, take heart. Ralph Sordell's House of Music at 3rd North Ground in Springfield is having their after Christmas clearance sale. If Santa forgot you, don't feel bad. He probably did you a favor because right now is the absolute best time of the year to save on all musical instruments in stock at the House of Music. From guitars to pianos, organs to clarinets, saxophones, trumpets, synthesizers, sound systems, drums, and amplifiers. Hurry, the sale ends Saturday. Go to the House of Music today, 3rd North Grand Springfield. Hi, 
Hey, Dave, heck of a party, isn't it? Well, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Hey, I'm looking for a new car and maybe a real good deal to go along with it. You got any ideas where I could get one? Steve, I just bought a new Pontiac, and my dealer is Jake F. Mutton. And Jake F. Mutton says... When Jake F. Mutton speaks, people listen. That outfit looks great. Thanks, I just washed it. You've been cheated. Cheated? By your detergent. Touch it. Did it soften? No. Or control static cling? What detergent can? Bold 3 Detergent Plus Fabric Softener has a cup full of detergent, a cap full of fabric softener combined in each wash. Bold 3 really cleans, but my regular detergent can't touch Bold's softness. Even static is under control. Bold 3 for cleaning with fabric softening no regular detergent can touch. Central Illinois' first baby of the new year is resting comfortably tonight at Springfield St. John's Hospital. Whitney Diaz was born at five minutes after midnight, weighing seven pounds and six ounces. Whitney is the daughter of Sabra and Clifford Diaz. Macon County's first baby of the year is expected tonight. We'll keep you updated. Well, the year 1985 will be remembered by many in Illinois as the year of the Salmonella Scare. News 17's Barbara Bousquet looks back at the health news in a year that started with an epidemic and then ended with a miracle. The year 1985 will be a bad memory for 18,000 people in Illinois and five other states. It's the year the milk went sour. A faulty valve at the Hill Farm Dairy near Chicago was blamed for letting salmonella bacteria seep into already pasteurized milk. The end result was the nation's worst salmonella epidemic, and during the following investigation, one of the worst episodes of political mudslinging. Give the gentleman the opportunity to answer a question that has been asked instead of a political statement by a former prosecutor who is out of order, Representative Daniels. Put, we don't want to cite. I am interested in getting down to the point of personal privilege. Of Hold on, Representative Hunter. I am interested. In getting no new pasteurization law. laws have been adopted, and the Hill Farm Dairy remains closed. New regulations were adopted, however, to screen blood donations. The spread of the disease AIDS prompted the test. A Decatur man died after receiving contaminated blood. This year, a new center will open in Macon County solely to test for AIDS. A Leroy man made history when he received a Jarvik 7 mechanical heart. Although Jack Bertram died 10 days later, his operation provided more information on the use of artificial hearts and may help save other lives. A Muwekwa minister, a Decatur girl, and a painter boy all received a second chance at life. Terry Maurer's life was saved when he received a heart transplant in August. I could never have ridden a bike before this all happened. There's no way. And now I can pretty easily, and it's coming. It's slow but sure. Five-year-old Krisha Fuller received a liver transplant in February, and Joshua Crawford was given the best Christmas present ever. After a year and a half wait, the five-year-old received a new liver in December at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Their miracles not only ended 1985 on a brighter note, but brought renewed hope to others awaiting organ donations in 1986. Indicator, Barbara Bousquet, News 17. We had hoped to bring you a story on the NAACP Emancipation Jubilee that was held today at Decatur's Church of Living God and did not have time on the 6 o'clock news, but you will see it tonight at 10. And also uh, coming up tonight at 10, what do we have? Well, uh, we're going to be talking more about the Reagan Gorbachev uh, New Year's Day greetings. And then on Health Watch, we're going to tell you how you can get rid of your New Year's Day hangover. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll see you then. Good night.